Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here from Mr. Build It, and in today's video, it's going to be a really, really fun one. I partnered with my friends from Tactical Baby Gear to create what we're calling the ultimate diaper baby changing station. It includes LED lights, storage for extra diapers, storage for the dirty diaper disposal, large drawers for the dresser, and a built-in changing pad. So without wasting any time, let me show you how I built it and let's get into the video. Let's go! All right, for a second, let's talk about the sponsors of today's video, Tactical Baby Gear. We're expecting our third child this summer, and the first two times, they're great, but the fashion, the dad fashion specifically, was a little bit off. Let me show you. The first two times, we used carriers like this and diaper bags like that to walk around in public with our kids. Though it's cute for my wife, I'm not a fan of it. Now, I've been a huge fan of Tactical Baby Gear way before they're a sponsor of this channel. They create incredible gear for dads, including carriers like this, military tactical, or sweet tactical baby diaper bags like this. That has awesome compartments. Dirty laundry chute, white bag, changing pads, tens of compartments for storage, snacks, replacement clothing, replacement clothing, that's such a dad term, spare clothing, stroller hangers, and probably room for beer. I think we can pit like three beers in there. Make sure you head over to tacticalbabygear.com, use the promo code MrBuild10, I'll link them down in the description below to get a 10% off your first order today. Thanks Tactical Baby Gear, really appreciate you guys. Without sponsors like you, I could put these videos out. Now let's get back to the build, let's go. All right, we are headed to the good old fashioned Home Depot. We're gonna pick up some supplies with my dude, Bex in the back, say hi Bex. Beckham did his first project in the garage by himself. What'd you make? Trophy. It's a trophy, dude, you did it all by yourself? It's just MDF and wood glue, dude. You did a, such a good job. I didn't even have to help you. Nice job, dude. That little uh, trophy out of MDF and I couldn't be proud of him. It's just, it's, sometimes it's a pain in the butt to have your kids do stuff like that, but I can't hinder his creativity. I'm just so proud of, so proud of you, buddy. You're so, oh, you're gonna be brilliant. We're gonna go pick up some lumber. We are gonna pick up a little bit of everything, basically. We got three quarter inch maple plywood because it paints really well. Half inch maple plywood for the drawer boxes, a couple of drawer slides just for the doors, I mean, you name it, veneer, uh, you name it, we're getting it. So, uh, let's get it done. Okay, so we've cut up our lumber as you saw on the track saw. See, sometimes you don't really need a table saw, you get away with a track saw. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, these are 18 inches deep, uh, this is four feet long, and this is 20 inches tall. So what I'm gonna do is start gluing things up. To make my life a little bit easier, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna use these clamps, uh, clamp it. Uh, they're kind of neat, they're really cheap, and the way they kind of work is you basically prop it in Right there, they're all specifically made for different sizes, like three quarter inch, half inch, and whatnot. All this stuff will be in my links in my description. And then what you do is, once you throw the glue on, <laughs> can't win today. Uh, these kind of hold it in place while you secure it. Uh, so I'm gonna start throwing some wood glue on there. I'm gonna use some brad nail, something like two inches long, start securing it, and then I'm gonna use a square to make sure everything's square, because we've talked about this before. If it's not square, your drawer sucks, and just foundation, that's all that matters. I was gonna brad nail this and glue the reinforcement piece right here, that way this thing doesn't sway side to side, you know, just making it stronger. And I realized I can't really do brad nail, I can brad nail this piece, but I can't brad nail this piece because it's in the way, so I'm gonna throw some pocket holes right here. We've done pocket holes before, you guys are experts in it. So I'm gonna go throw a couple of pocket holes just to be able to secure it, throw some wood glue, bada bing, bada boom, and I think the base of our cabinet will be almost done. Well, minus the veneer part. Well, you guys get it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, look at this beautiful thing. Nice and sturdy, it ain't going nowhere. Now, here's the thing. We're gonna need to include all of this uh, edge, end grain, whatever we wanna call it, the plywood end grain. So there's two ways of doing it. Doing a face frame, cabinet style. We've done stuff like that. You've seen my videos. Or we're gonna do it the nice, easy way. Uh, we're just gonna edge band it. All edge banding is, it's a veneer made out of the same material as this with an adhesive on the back side of it. And by using an iron, we're gonna iron it on, release that adhesive, and then basically it's gonna be like one permanent sticker, if you will. Now, before we get to do that, some of these edges, they're gonna make it a little bit difficult for us to do. So what I like to do is take a sander and start cleaning all this up, making sure everything's nice and flush, especially by joints like that. You want it nice and clean and flush. So we're gonna do that, clean it up, start edge banding, and then we'll go from there. All right, it's my understanding it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission when it comes to using the iron. All right, well, I'll, just, I'll, I'll go ask her. Hey, babe. I'm gonna use your iron. I'm gonna use your iron. <laughs> I need to iron some wood. Oh, uh, you might as well keep it. You've already ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you bill me? Send me an invoice. Alright folks, if you've made it this far and you're looking you're like, ah, I don't think this is looking good. There's still the magic moment. Here's the magic moment. Uh, all this excess, which is about an eighth inch on whatever side, take a razor blade and start trimming it off. Be very careful not to cut the plywood off. Then, once you get it to about where you can still feel it, maybe a sixteenth, grab, oh, grab a scrap piece of wood and uh, 80 to 120 grit sandpaper. Wrap it around, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start working the edge of it, bringing two of the surfaces flush with one another. And so now, this looks perfect. Let me show you. This is what it was. We trimmed it a little bit, and then this is where we sanded it. Look how nice that is. All right, let's get cracking on the rest of this thing. Also, I'd like to sincerely apologize for saying let's get cracking. Uh, we only said that in the 90s. Let's cracking, let's crack a lacking. Let's be better. I'm, I'm not saying it again. Let's be better. The drawers are gonna be made out of half inch maple plywood. The bottoms of the drawers are gonna be made out of quarter inch plywood. You can use maple or birch, it doesn't matter. Um, the idea is they're gonna be eight inches tall, not including the face frame, that's gonna be obviously larger. And then um, they're gonna be 16 inches deep. I got 16 inch long extendable uh, drawer slides. So we're gonna start just mass producing them right now. So I'm gonna start ripping everything on my table so I make sure everything's the same size. And then at that point, we're gonna start securing everything with pocket holes. So let's get to work. We need to create the channel for the bottom, the, the quarter inch bottom that's gonna be the bottom of our drawers. Now, uh, in order to avoid using a dado stack, instead I will take my regular blade, which is uh, an eighth inch wide, I'm gonna set it to a quarter inch in depth, and then I'm gonna make two passes, two eighth inches equals a quarter, and that way, that piece will sit flush inside of it. So I'm just gonna get everything set up straight, gonna be about, I don't know, half an inch off the bottom, and then I'm gonna create two passes per board, and then we'll be able to assemble everything. So. Let's get to work. Everything's rounded over like we promised and we're really glad we did it. So now all we have to do is start cleaning all of these things up. What I mean by it is things like that. Little things like that are the things that kind of improve the quality of the work. So I'm gonna quickly send this to about 120 uh, grit on my sander. Then I'm gonna start installing the slides onto that cabinet and this drawer. And then we'll start building the drawer faces. Let's go. This helps install these little drawer slides. This is just a slide opened up. This is a magnet. This is a reference mark. Once you place it on top, I've created a little uh, recess that would uh, account for the face frames that are coming in. So once the line's there, I'm just gonna position it there, line it up exactly where that little recess is. I'm gonna take a little center hole punch to help me line up my screws a lot easier. There you go. First one's in, first one's always the hardest. Perfect, that's in, take this off, that's perfect. I'm gonna throw in a few securing screws just for backup. And the first slide's done, now we're gonna do the rest of them.
Okay, so we have our drawers on. It's time for the drawer faces. Now, typically I like to build drawer faces out of uh, solid, more harder wood, a denser wood, but uh, I also don't want to break the bank on this. I'm going to use select pine. The reason why I select, it's a little pricier, but as you can see, there's no knots, there's no imperfections that we need to patch up and fix with uh, wood filler. So, this board is eight feet by, I want to say 10 inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I need three drawer faces. So I'm gonna try getting three drawer faces out of this. And then once we get them all done, we'll put a little chamfer on the edges, round them all over to make sure they're nice and appropriate. And then we're just, you know what? Let's figure out a pattern. I think this thing needs a pattern. We'll, we'll give it a pattern. So we'll cut these up and give it a pattern. We're creative this morning. So I still wanna do a pattern. I don't want to screw the pattern up before building the door because the door, I definitely know how it wants to be. I want it to be like that retro cleated look. I've done a similar pattern on my floating vanity in the master bathroom. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I think you'll like it. But I think what I'm first is going to do before committing to a pattern in the drawers is build this door the same way. And the way I do that is take a bunch of one by twos. We're basically going to create the styles and the rails and then create these in the middle. If you don't have a domino, that is like a tenon jig, you'll see the tool used here in a minute. Um, just use uh, pocket holes or brad nails. Uh, I have a domino. I'm going to use my domino. All right, you guys have to see this. The door is looking awesome, so check this out. It's roughly spaced out. It still needs to be gapped out evenly. Oh, it's gonna look so good over there. I'm gonna round over all these edges. I'm not gonna do it where it joins because I've done that before and I don't like how that looks, but I am just gonna run it on my router right there. Now remember, if you don't have a router table, no problem, you just use a palm router with a little round over bit. And it just makes it so much nicer. Since the router is gonna be going anyways, I might as well take those uh, face frames for the drawers and just give a nice round over, cleaner look all around it. We're almost there, let's go. Now earlier I mentioned about dominoes. Dominoes are just these little tiny little wood chips. They're basically the idea of creating a mortise and tenon but in a more expedited, quicker way. A domino is a gift sent from heaven to earth. And all it does is it quickly lines up, you press it in and it creates that exact size hole that you can shove that in. Now, if you don't have this tool, which is pretty pricey, if you don't have this tool, for the longest time when I did things like that, there are other alternative options. Number one is to do a dowel. Dowels are a little tedious, they take a little bit longer, but you could still totally do it. Option number two is you can create pocket holes. Now, you will create the pocket holes, you can pocket hole screws. On the back side of the door, obviously you'll see all the pocket holes. The solution is these pocket hole plugs. A little bit of wood glue, shove it in there. Once it dries, shave it off and then sand it and wood fill anything that's exposed. So you have a plethora of Plethora, I don't say that often enough. You have a bunch of different options to do this door. I have this tool, I'm gonna do this. Let's get to work. Here are all of our mortises right over here, little holes basically. For our tenons, we have all these little dominoes. It's got these little grooves on them. When moisture like wood glue gets on them, it expands, so it creates even a tighter seal. So, excuse me, I got a lot of glue to do. Everything's laid out, so now I kind of have a visual. So instead of making lines going uh, horizontally to this, I am going to create two lines that are going to come across about a quarter inch off the edge, and another two lines coming across here, and they're going to cross each other here. So there are going to be little crosses right there. So two lines, quarter inch apart, quarter inch apart, and then uh, I think that'll be just enough to give this kind of like that unique look. First time making this, uh, hopefully this turns out good. All right, I sanded them down a little bit. What do you guys think? I'm kind of digging this a lot. First time ever doing this kind of pattern, excited that we we're actually having the, the guts to try. I used a technique that I learned not too long ago. It's, it's using a playing card. And so the way it works is you get your playing cards, divide it into whatever gaps you want to do. In my situation, they're about 3 8 inch of an inch wide. I set them at the bottom, take my drawer face. I then take and have a pre-drilled hole where the knob will go. I'll secure the drawer face temporarily to the drawer box. Very carefully, I will pull my drawer out and then secure it from the inside with one inch screw. I will then remove the screw that was holding in place, drill a hole all the way through and then install the drawer pulls. A 
look at this. Look how nicely this turned out. So, woo, the amount of textures we're gonna have on this thing is gonna be sweet. All right, so the actual baby changing part, the part that keeps the baby safe is the topper. My wife wrote down some, some dimensions. I gotta build the topper that's 33 and a half inches by 17 and a half by three and a half inches tall. So we are gonna take some of our leftover wood, create that quick little frame, and then use pocket holes to secure it on top. I'm just gonna use some scrap MDF that I have, and uh, that way I don't have to edge band it. All right, folks, I think we're ready for the primer. The primer that I like to always use is the Kills Hide All. It's an interior, it's latex, meaning it's water-based. Um, it's really easy to work with. It creates this adhesiveness that allows for the paint to actually have good grip to the wood. Wood is porous. It expands and contracts with temperature changes. So, I usually do one coat of this stuff, put it on, it clogs all the pore, it pores, and then at that point, we start spraying the paint and it just, mm, it just gives you that grip. So. Quick little roll, fine sanding, like 220 grit, just to get rid of any kind of raised pattern grain, and then we'll start getting for painting. So let's do it. All right, folks, so for paint, I'm using a color from Sherwin-Williams called Ripe Olive. It's in a satin. Now, here's the trick about cabinet uh, kind of paint. Don't use latex. That stuff is water-based. It comes off really, pretty easy. So what I like to use is a paint product that's called urethane emerald alkalid. Uh, it's super tough. It's it's as easy to work with as a water-based paint, meaning you dilute it with water if you're using HVLP spray, but it's hard like an oil-based paint. So highly recommended. Go check it out. A little pricey, about 70 bucks a gallon, but well worth it. So I'm going to go start spraying. Let's go. All right, so legs. Uh, last and final part is the legs. I picked up, well I didn't pick up, this was kind of leftover stuff from my staircase video. If you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. Really had fun project. I got it from my local steel shop. All in all, I think if I was to calculate this, probably maybe 30 bucks worth of steel. I cut that on that metal cutting chop saw. If you don't have one, use this. Circular saw. And if you don't have that, actually that was a reciprocating saw. This is a circular saw. I don't even know my tools, do I? And you can put a blade. There are specialty metal blades you can put on them. Now. A lot of people are intimidated about welding and you really have no reason to do so. Now, let me show you a couple of quick tips, tricks, just to get yourself fired up and get going. So let me show you. So these setups, they're always super simple. So in the back of almost every welder, there's a little cheat sheet based off of the steel that you're using. So mine is that thick. It'll tell you the settings for the gas and the settings for the knob. So in this situation, it's a three here and a 35 on the wire feed. Now, here's a technique. For the actual pattern, there are two techniques, the E and the Z. I don't do the Z, I do the E technique. And all it is is a cursive E that you're just gonna follow this way. This is the distance you will travel. I like to use this anti-splatter spray. You just spray it on and that reduces the amount of splatter that sparks all over the place. And so here we go, we have this little tiny E pattern that we just accomplished. We got ourselves some something, I guess. All right, so we got everything welded up. Everything's nice, sturdy, and square. Uh, before laying down our paint, I'm using a self-etching primer. It gives you that texture on it that way. Whatever goes onto the smooth metal surface can actually stick pretty pretty tightly on. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, a couple coats of this, we'll start putting the paint. So, let's get a rest. Oh, I need a rest. I'll be right back. All right, let's tag this thing. All right, so everything's curing on the paint. It's looking awesome. It's gonna match the brass really, really well. At this point, I'm just gonna take a drill bit and I'm gonna start creating the holes on top. Okay, so when it comes to installing, I got my little kid here, I got my screws. Then I'm just gonna flip the sucker over, lay this over it, and then just start securing and then flip it all together. Okay, I'll be completely honest with you. When I saw everything apart, I wasn't too sure I'm gonna like this project, but as soon as that bronze gold bladed uh, legs went on this green, it, oh, oh, a good feeling so far. So I'm just happy it's working out. So I'm gonna start hanging this up and start making the final adjustments and start putting in LED lights. That wasn't as exciting as I thought it sounded. 
and put on a LED lights. Let's go. <laughs> and one thing I didn't notice is check this out. Well, we don't have a stopper for it. So solve that problem. There's always something. Uh, cut a little scrap piece of wood. I'm gonna drill it underneath here and then put a couple of those little rubberized clear circular stoppers that you put it, you know, in drawers to prevent them from banging up all the paint. There we go. All right, so this is the LED kit that I bought uh, on Amazon. They're, they're always different brands that I use, but all of them were pretty faithful. That's just instructions. This is a strip. For the most part, they're all about the same. Get rid of that, get that. Power source, little mountain stuff. Okay, so we're just gonna start on the inside and work our way down. That is it for me this week. Thanks so much for watching this video. A huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Tactical Baby Gear. Make sure you head over to their website. Use the promo code at checkout, Mr. Build a 10, all one word, to get 10% off your first order. If you're brand new channel and you like videos like this or any kind of home improvement project, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there and tap the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every time a video comes out. Remember, you don't need to have the experience. Nobody has to teach you these things. All you need is the courage and sweat, the courage to try on these projects and the sweat to actually put up the hard work and learn something in the middle of that project to take it on the next one. Catch me on my social media, all the links, including the tools will be down in the description below along with the merch section. Tune out this week, we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya, bye.